So for our fish choice, we want a nice um, fattier fish. Absolutely, the fatty fish are a great source of vitamin D. So if you're doing a three ounce serving, which is about a palm size serving or size of a deck of cards, of salmon or arctic char, you can get up to 100% of the vitamin D you need in a day. So those fatty fish are awesome. We had a question about the omega-3s. You're going to get quite a bit of omega-3 fatty acids, which help to reduce inflammation, and then for the vitamin D as well. Today we're using a different fish because I feel like everybody eats salmon, but we want to expose people to some other choices that are also quite healthy. Yeah, absolutely. So we're using rainbow trout today. Um, rainbow trout is... You know, it's an underused fish, it's a delicious fish, it's a sustainable choice. Uh, you just want to make sure, uh, for one thing, if you do have a fishmonger, and I suggest, you know, go to a place that has somebody behind the counter so you can talk to, so you can ask questions, especially when you're buying fish, if you don't buy that often, you want to make sure you're buying a good quality fish. So for rainbow trout, oh, Whoop. sorry. He's it's swimming away. No, no. <laughs> rainbow trout um, is, um, it farmed, farm, most of it is farmed. You can f uh, fish it yourself uh, if you want. It's actually, it opened, <laughs> it opened uh, the season opened at the end of April, but um, what you want to make sure that it's a flow through system, that it's farmed in a flow through system, not an open net system. Um, and you should be able to get these questions from, from your fishmonger uh, and ask them. The flow through system is the sustainable choice. It means that it's a, it's a very clean method. The water is constantly being flow, uh, flowed through the system versus being stuck in a, in a pen, which is not good. So definitely ask those questions. And then when you're choosing whole fish, because not a lot of people use whole fish, uh, we, I don't know if we've ever done whole fish in this class. No. Uh, but I th no, I don't think we have. <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a good idea to talk about it because if you did want to yeah, do a whole fish, what do you look for? So uh, it obviously shouldn't smell fishy. It should smell like the water. It should smell like if it's an ocean fish, it should smell like the ocean, but not fishy. Um, the eye should be nice and clear. It should not be cloudy at all. Um, that's, that's a good sign. And the, f the texture of the fish is, is very important. I find that to be one of, the, one of the most important sensors. Does the cloudy eye mean he didn't wear his sunglasses? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. That, that could have been. <laughs> yeah. So cl looks nice, clear, clear <laughs> eye. Uh, and then if you can, sometimes it's on ice, uh, but touch the fish is a very good indication. You can see as I'm touching this fish, it's bouncing back. It's a very, very firm flesh. If I, if when I pressed on it, if it, my fingerprint, that whole indentation stayed, then that means that it's been there for, for a little bit too long. It's not a good fish. He's dehydrated, yeah. so he's been out of the water. For so make sure it's a nice, firm fish. And I can tell, like, this is a nice, firm, flesh fish. Very, very fresh. Um, also, get, unless you're, you want to be brave enough at home to clean it, get your fish monitor to clean it. It's a free service, it's a free charge. Um, you don't have to do anything at home, you can just cook it. So it makes it a lot, lot easier. Um, so that's it, that's our rainbow trout. And what I wanna do is prepare a really nice marinade for it, or a nice little rub for it. It's gonna give it some really nice flavor. And it's very simple. Actually, Chrissy, maybe if you could start adding it in there. Yeah. We have some shallots. If you haven't used shallots before, they just add this kind of wonderful sweetness, like a red onion would. Mm -hmm. And you can use red onion as well, even regular onion, just a little bit. Uh, a little bit of sun-dried tomato. Um, again, it just adds a really nice punch of flavor. And you can add red chili if you want, if you want a little bit of spicy. With fish, I don't like to make it too spicy because you don't want to overpower it, but a little bit of chili if you like. Did you, you rehydrate those? These are, yeah, yeah, so you can, you can either get them dried, soak them in water and rehydrate them, or you can find them in the oil. The oil is going to have a little bit more fat obviously in them, but uh, either way. Um, and then we're gonna add some parsley. So for the recipe, it calls for about one cup. We're only gonna add about half of that to this, so we're gonna save the rest. So half of that goes in. The zest of a lemon. We want some of that fragrant flavor lemon that Lemon and fish oils. just go together. There's no other way. So this is where I suggest, if you are gonna buy something organic, uh, especially for lemons. Lemons, regular lemons now are just so expensive that for, I think it's maybe an extra 20 cents or whatever it is. But if you're going to use the zest, the organic lemons um, are a great choice. And just wash it really well. And that's going to go in. Nice burst of flavor. Some of that lemon juice as well. This is Jeremy's uh, famous 
find your paper cut lemon squeezing technique. Yes. I'm okay. So where you capture okay. the little seeds when you squeeze it through your hand, or you can use a little colander or strainer if you prefer. And a little bit of toasted breadcrumb. This is optional, you don't have to do this. Um, I like the addition of the toasted breadcrumb because when you bake the fish, those little pieces start to crisp up a little bit and it gives it a really nice texture on the outside. That's optional, you don't have to do that. And we're gonna add just a little bit of olive oil, too much, and just season it, a little pinch of salt. Okay, so that is gonna go on. We wanna pulse it. Not until it's like a pesto or a paste. You want it to still be nice and coarse. A little bit more. It's really the sun-dried tomatoes you wanna break down. That's actually perfect. So this is what you're looking for. So really nice and coarse. You got those bits of sun-dried tomato. It's not wet, it's pretty, well, it's a little wet, but it's not like a, like a pesto wet, it's pretty dry. And that is what we want. So I'm gonna take this out of the way. And this is great, I mean, you can do this as a rub for chicken, you can do this as a really nice marinade for grilled eggplant, it would be beautiful. And we're, remember, we're cooking this whole. And again, if you didn't want to do it whole, you can definitely do this with um, nice little fillets as well. It'll work just as well. And what we want to do, and I'm trying to make this so that everyone can see, is cut little diagonal slits into the fish. Very, very shallow. You don't want to go too deep. And what this is going to do is going to allow for that rub to penetrate that flesh and just give it some really, really, really nice flavor. And you're going to do both sides. Whatever you do on one side, make sure you do it on the other side. With rainbow trout, they usually take the scales off. Now, sometimes you'll get some of the small ones, which is fine. And so what I want to do is just get that and just be messy with it. And just kind of press it into those slits and rub it all over. Throw some inside as well. That's going to perfume the fish. And then on both sides, remember, both sides have to get love from the parsley. <laughs> so it looks kind of messy, but it's going to be It smells very amazing. Tasty. I don't know if in the front row you can smell the fragrance of the lemon and the sun-dried tomato. You don't have to. Um, it doesn't make a difference. You can actually tell them to take it. Tell the fishmonger to take it. Um, yeah, it depends on your presentation preference. If you want to serve it, the whole piece, or but you don't have to. You don't have to leave it on. I went to a Spanish restaurant the other night with a friend, and he was trying to fight with me over who would get to have the cheek of the fish because they serve the whole fish. But it's actually like a really nice, soft part. <laughs> So I was like, I'm going to be a nice friend and let you have the cheeks today, but I get the cheeks next time. And the trout is very, very small, so <laughs> probably not much fighting. But um, And that's it. Really, really nice and simple. We're going to just put a little bit of olive oil on the top and just a last pinch of salt. And that's it. That's going to go into the oven, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've got it a pretty hot oven. Um, and it's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes or so <laughs> just until you have a nice crispy um, skin on the outside and you'll notice the flesh will be very easy to remove off the bone. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I just took it out. Our magic oven does things instantly. And so, oh, that's hot. So I did, these are a few here, but you can kind of get the idea of what it, what it looks like, nice and roasted. That, you can see that uh, marinade on the outside, crisped up a little bit. And you can even put some things on the bottom. So I, I tried it with some thin sliced potatoes on the bottom just to give it a little bit of a bed. Uh, you can just do it plain as well. Uh, but that's what you're looking for, really nice and crispy. And the, the flesh, well, I'll show you after, but the flesh just, just takes, just kind of falls. You can see how I'm pulling it off really, really easy off the bone. Uh, now with the, the trout, sometimes there's the little, the, little, the little pin bones. Most of it falls off 
when you do take it off, the, when it's cooked and you take it off the, the rest of the, the skeleton, but you always have to be careful if your mom's there. And I like the use of the parchment paper, so you don't have to spend all night scrubbing that pan, especially with an oily dish. It's going to be a lot of cleaning. So use that parchment paper, and then that way, throw it away. It's quick and easy cleanup. Absolutely. And to serve, to serve it, we're going to use, here, I'll grab one of these guys. You want a plate? Yeah. I was trying to, actually, you know what, I have a big plate here. I'm, I was oh. thinking, I'm like, I'm not, I don't have a big, big enough plate. You need a platter yes. for this guy. There we go. And you could just That's serve it on the work. table like that, right? Yes, absolutely. So that is going to go in. We're going to get a spatula. So it's recommended that we eat fish twice a week to get the omega-3s that we need in our diet for heart health, for you know, preventing other chronic diseases as well. And for the vitamin D is another great reason to incorporate it. So that's gonna go on top. And to serve it, we have just a really, really simple salad. So I have some fennel and some parsley. And so the parsley, um, just kind of separate a little bit, but it's nice, just the whole leaves. Really, really nice and refreshing as a salad on its own. And then some of that fennel in there as well. We'll season it really, really simply. You can, you can put your own favorite dressing. I'm a fan of just the lemon and the olive oil. Salt. And that's it. Just give it a good toss. So um, that's it. The, the fennel salad on top. So just a little bit of yogurt on the side. Um, it's a nice little condiment, a nice little dressing with that, that parsley and that lemon and that sun-dried tomato. It's like a healthier tartar sauce. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's what it is. And, uh, and that's it. Really, really simple. These are just some Ontario fava beans. I couldn't resist. I found those as well. So. So a little bit of that, and that's it. Whole roasted trout with a little bit of a nice fennel and parsley salad on top. Yeah. Great summer dish.